Hello, and welcome to another Channel 2012 Windows installation video. Today, we're going to be installing Windows 8 on this circa 2006 Core 2 Duo Apple MacBook. This demonstration will cover installation over the network, driver installation, the Windows Experience Index, the Windows 8.1 upgrade process, and some general hardware observations for your viewing pleasure. All right, we got everything set up here. We're going to go ahead and get started with the network installation. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail with this because there are other guides that explain this. So if you'd like a step-by-step -step instructional guide on how to install Windows over the network, be sure to check out the link in the video description that I'm going to provide to where I learned how to do this. The fellow in that video does a very good job of describing this. But in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing is I have my Windows 8 ISO file. I have mounted it here as a virtual DVD drive in this computer. And I am in turn sharing that DVD drive on the network. We're going to be booting the MacBook here from Windows PE. That's the Windows pre-installation environment. I've made a bootable CD of that. And from there, we're going to be able to access the network share of Windows 8 and its installer. And we'll start the installation there. And that should allow it to complete much more quickly over the network as opposed to reading all the installation files off a CD or USB drive. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. I've already put the Windows PE CD into the MacBook's DVD drive. So we're going to go ahead and start it up and hold down the Alt key in order to get to the Select Boot Device screen. Alright, as we can see the CD is the only option there since there is no operating system currently installed on the hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and press Enter to pick that. This is the 64-bit version of the Windows pre-installation environment, WinPE, as I'll refer to it throughout the rest of the video. Uh, if you're doing this at home, and if you watched the video that I suggested earlier, one important thing that he does not mention is that if you're installing a 64-bit version of Windows, you need to be using the 64-bit version of WinPE. I'll do my best to try and provide a download link to that as well in the video description. If you're installing a 32-bit version of Windows or you're using an ISO that has both 64 and 32-bit installations of Windows on it, then a 32-bit version of WinPE will do just fine. But in this case, I have created a CD with the 64-bit WinPE on it, so we're going to go ahead and boot that up. One other important observation if you're following along on a MacBook, or at least one of these models, is that this one in particular does not seem to support booting from a USB drive. It has to be from a CD. But that's just part of what makes the network installation convenient. The only CD you ever have to make or USB drive, if you're using a computer that supports USB booting, is the WinPE CD or USB drive. You do all your Windows installation over the network. And here we are. As you can see, I have successfully booted into WinPE. I have mapped the shared folder to a network drive. In this case, it is drive letter Y. And you can see here all the files that are on there correspond to the shared files and folders on the host computer here. So I'm going to go ahead and start setup.exe. And here we are at the Windows 8 installer. From here I can step through the installation as I would on any other computer as if I were booted from a normal CD or USB drive. As you can see, the Windows 8 installer is a bit more boring than the Windows 7 one. 
but that'll work fine for us here. In case you're wondering, this uh, procedure does work the same way with Windows Vista or Windows 7 if you're looking to set one of those up. Alright, here we are. Seems pretty agreeable to me. Okay, we'll go ahead with custom installation here. Now we're going to go ahead and let it install for a little while. Alright, and here we are after two restarts and maybe about 15 minutes of installation. We're already at the first screen where we get to choose options for the computer. This part's kind of tricky because Windows 8 really only looks halfway decent with a very small subset of its possible color schemes. And this screen that's in this particular MacBook does not look that pretty to be honest. Okay, well, looks like it did find the driver for the built-in wireless card. Okay. Let's go ahead and customize those settings. Hmm. Wow, well, wants me to sign in with a Microsoft account. Well, I don't want it to have my Microsoft account, so we're going to click Sign In Without a Microsoft Account. All right, let's click finish and see what happens. It says hi. I can tell already I'm going to have to do a little hunting around for drivers for this. Either that or it just hasn't set the resolution of the screen quite right by default. We're getting your PC ready. Who's we? I've always questioned the use of pronouns in Windows. It says stuff like, don't turn off or unplug your computer or something to that effect or like this we're getting your PC ready it should have in those particular cases it should just say something along the lines of Windows is shutting down so please don't unplug or turn off the computer or in this case Windows is setting up hold on a second type of thing Get to the desktop here, and there we are. After about 20 minutes, we have made it to the Windows desktop. Now I'm going to go ahead and poke around. I'm going to install drivers and get things set up, and then we're going to take a look at the Windows Experience Index score and see how this thing performs. And we're back here again. As you can see, I've got the computer set up and updated. we got all the drivers installed and everything is pretty much working the way it's supposed to here on the Core 2 Duo MacBook. Now that we have it set up and I'm screen recording, i got a lot of stuff to cover here, starting with drivers. Uh, drivers were a bit of a tricky thing to make work. Unlike other manufacturers of computers, Apple makes it difficult for you to find the drivers for specific models. They do have the download somewhere, but it's ridiculously difficult to find. The good news is that when you do find it, it's all available as one single ISO file, which you can then mount, as I did, or extract using WinRAR or similar software. From there, there's a, a one-time installer, or you can install all the drivers individually, which makes for actually a pretty clean installation. If you're looking to do the same thing I did, I'll spare you the trouble of finding that file that they hide so well and I will link to both the torrent file where I got it from and if possible I'll also upload that ISO file to Mega Upload so that you can download it easily. As you can see here everything works great. I got it updated to Windows 8.1. Of course before I upgraded the system to 8.1 I did take a screenshot of the Windows Experience Index. You can go through these on your own time, but 
basically it gets a 3.2 hampered by its Intel graphics that it has. It doesn't look quite as jazzy here as it does in person because I'm screen recording this and because I'm accessing it through remote desktop because I didn't feel like installing the screen recording software on the MacBook. But everything works great. I'm, I'm really kind of liking the Windows 8.1 here. I really wish they would let me update my other computer to it uh, as it does have a lot of improvements over Windows 8.0. We'll go over those more here in a little bit though. The MacBook has a number of unique pieces of hardware that make the setup process, we'll say, interesting. You got cool stuff like the webcam, which can be accessed through the camera application. Apparently, the resolution I'm recording this at won't let me open that, but take my word that it does work. It also has something very interesting, and that is a receiver for infrared remote. If I go over here under device manager you can see Apple IR receiver is on the list there and that actually does work with uh, the Apple remote that I have for adjusting the volume as well as various media functions. Other than that there's nothing too exciting with the hardware. The, the trackpad isn't that good. The special Apple driver for it does improve it some, at least as far as the sensitivity goes, but it also gives it that weird Apple OS X mouse acceleration, which is, it's more bearable than you'd think on a laptop, but it's still not optimal. That kind of depends on preference, I guess. It also has a kind of funky keyboard that's missing a lot of rather important keys like print screen for screenshots, home, and stuff like that. The backspace key is labeled delete erroneously and if you want to use the delete function you press function plus backspace which is labeled as delete. It's really confusing. It's really not a great keyboard for anything at all really. Other noteworthy features of the hardware include that the trackpad is lacking the right click function. I found that very very unusual. I, I was right-clicking and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't right-click on the screen and then I did some research and found that it's all one big left click if you look at the trackpad itself. To achieve the right click what you have to do is touch two fingertips on the trackpad while you left click. They also have, I almost forgot to mention this, they have a software called Boot Camp and this has some interesting hardware specific features in it. Uh, first thing you want to do if you're setting this up at home, you want to make sure that you have this selected and you click apply. That'll speed up the post process. If you don't, it'll still boot, but it'll hang on that white post screen for a very long time. Also, brightness. You'll, find, you'll see here that Windows has no control over the brightness by itself. You see here it says unavailable although it is available in here in boot camp control panel. Here we got options for the remote uh, keyboard. You can switch the function keys and the F1 through 10 keys around if you want. There's also some extended settings here for the trackpad. You can turn on tap to click. I have the right click option enabled. You can also have the, the usual palm rejection setting as well and you also have the option to restart automatically after a power failure. As far as running Windows 8.1 goes on here as a whole, it's actually quite pleasant once it's set up. It improves on a lot of the issues, like I said, over plain old regular Windows 8.0. I mean, you get a shutdown button in the start menu here. Also in the start menu here, you have control over the sizes of the icons that are there. There's a number of other improvements in there as well, but if you're running stuff like start menu applications, you also get the bar at the top here, like in a normal program, and then if you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen, which I can't do apparently because I'm in a remote desktop right now, you do get the start bar up there. Also, you get the start menu applications can now show up like regular applications on the taskbar there. Other minor improvements include that when you log in, 
it'll take you straight to the desktop instead of the start menu. And to further make that full screen start menu a slightly less jarring experience, they also let you keep your wallpaper that you had on your desktop inside of the start menu. So lots of good improvements there. I'm, I'm liking this. I, I still don't like the, the monotone lack of transparency here, but they are making steps in the right direction, so we got to give them credit for that. The only real show-stopping issue with using Windows 8 on this MacBook I found was that the Windows 8 hybrid shutdown feature does not work correctly with the MacBook's funky backlight control. If you perform a shutdown with the hybrid shutdown fast startup feature enabled, the next time you start the computer, the backlight will not turn on until the user has logged in and the boot camp assistant panel has started. To remedy that, I've just turned off the hybrid boot feature on this particular unit. In conclusion, the Core 2 Duo MacBook may be an older machine, but it's surprisingly good for Windows 8.1. I haven't set up a whole lot of stuff on here because I'm mainly using it right now as just a general browsing computer, but overall it, it seems to be a good system for what it is. Considering its age, it does run this very, very well. There's definitely room for improvement on this computer in terms of the trackpad. You've also got the issues with the keyboard. It's also pretty difficult to service as far as you know taking stuff apart and replacing certain components. But at the end of the day, as just a general purpose Windows 8.1 computer, it really doesn't do that bad of a job. I hope you found today's video entertaining and informative, and be sure to stay tuned to the all-new Channel 2012 for the latest in reviews, guides, food, computers, general around the house, and other high-quality, high-definition uploads. Thanks for watching.